bringing DeFi lending to the real world. Summary, Cheng Cheng, co-founder of the DeFi protocol Jia, and George Mazomi, COO of the Safi protocol, and a founding member of the Africa DeFi Alliance discuss DeFi lending use cases across emerging markets, where there is an over $100 billion credit gap. Here are the main points. 1. Discrepancies and challenges in African traditional lending practices. The speakers highlight the stark contrast in lending opportunities between developed nations and Africa. 1. Speaker's personal experience showcases the ease of access to low-interest, uncollateralized loans in the UK compared to the high-interest, collateral-required loans in Kenya. The conversation addresses the main challenges of the African lending landscape, including a lack of data access and the low prevalence of traditional bank accounts, making it difficult to assess potential borrowers' creditworthiness. Alternative credit scoring methods utilizing non-traditional data sources like SMS transactions and social media are considered. 2. Harnessing DeFi to address Africa's credit gap the discussion revolves around the potential of decentralized finance, DeFi, to address credit accessibility in African markets. DeFi, a blockchain-based financial system, operates independently of traditional intermediaries, using smart contracts on platforms like Ethereum. The speakers, involved in DeFi projects targeting Africa, discuss their platform's potential to offer fairer lending opportunities by leveraging alternative data for credit assessment. They also reference the Africa DeFi Alliance's objective to inject $100 billion into small enterprises struggling with high interest rates or capital access. The consensus is that DeFi holds promise for resolving these issues. 3. DeFi as a solution to Africa's credit challenges, the dialogue primarily discusses the potential of decentralized finance, DeFi, to address credit accessibility issues in Africa, especially for small and medium-sized enterprises, SMEs. Topics include the use of technology in credit risk assessment, the drawbacks of digital lenders, and the benefits of community banking. The conversation introduces GIA, a platform aimed at bridging the credit gap through affordable business financing, and the Africa DeFi Alliance, which seeks to provide substantial working capital to the continent's micro-SMES. The main point is the exploration of DEFI's potential in bridging Africa's credit gap by democratizing credit access, innovating credit assessment, and promoting responsible borrowing. For DEFI's role in transforming SME financing in developing markets L the discussion contrasts traditional debt markets with decentralized finance, DeFi, platforms, exploring their impact on small and medium enterprises, SMEs, in developing economies like Africa. It emphasizes the high barriers and costs in conventional markets and DEFI's potential to democratize capital access and lower costs. The need for DeFi platforms to ensure transparency and build trust is also highlighted, along with the role of technology in boosting efficiency and facilitating global investments. The central theme is DeFi's potential to reshape SME financing in emerging markets by lowering borrowing costs and dismantling entry barriers. 5. DeFi as a catalyst for SME's capital access and cost reduction in emerging markets, the conversation juxtaposes traditional debt markets and decentralized finance, DeFi, platforms, underlining DeFi's advantages for small and medium enterprises, SMEs, in emerging markets. It portrays the difficulties SMEs face in conventional markets, such as high barriers and costs, and how DeFi platforms aim to counter these by providing alternative funding and reducing capital costs. The necessity for DeFi platforms to foster transparency and trust due to the diverse and global nature of DeFi investors is also discussed. DeFi's potential to lower borrower interest rates and attract both yield-seeking and impact-driven investors is highlighted. The discussion concludes with DeFi's potential in revolutionizing SME financing by reducing costs and barriers. 6. Examining the challenges and prospects of real-world DeFi lending the discussion explores the hurdles and opportunities decentralized finance, DeFi, protocols encounter in real-world lending, including scalability, collateralization, creditworthiness, and regulatory concerns. The speakers examine non-collateralized lending, emphasizing the need for a creditworthiness and risk management system, possibly through blockchain technology. They suggest a DeFi framework to create a borrower's credit history and reputation on the blockchain, addressing repayment challenges and discouraging loan stacking. 
the integration of blockchain in traditional lending could unlock investment opportunities and promote responsible borrowing. Content Type Podcast Interview Content Publisher The Flip Publish Date May 2023 Bankless Weekly Rollup, Second Week of May 2023 Summary In the conversation, the speakers cover various news events related to the cryptocurrency world. Here is a detailed overview of each of the events discussed. 1. Coinbase Yield Rate Issue The dialogue opens with fears about Coinbase high yield rates potentially discouraging solo crypto staking, drawing parallels to the community's response to the birth of minor extractable value MEV. The speaker notes that, as with MEV, resolving yield rate concerns will require substantial research and concerted efforts. 2. MEV Sandwich Attacks The conversation concludes with a focus on MEV sandwich attacks, specifically the significant profits made by the bot, Jared from Subway.eth, through such exploitation. The speakers propose that earnings from these activities should be evenly distributed among all Ethereum owners instead of being monopolized by a few. 3. Brad Sherman's Crypto Comments Brad Sherman, a U.S. representative, was discussed for his critical comments on cryptocurrency, accusing the industry of making money out of thin air, and likening attendees of a Bitcoin conference to tax evaders. The speakers refuted these accusations, stating that they and many others in the crypto industry pay their taxes. 4. Lido Withdrawals The conversation then shifted to the Ethereum staking solution, Lido, which is reportedly enabling withdrawals. If the on-chain vote passes, staked Ether withdrawals out of Lido will be allowed starting from May 15, 2023. Arbitrum Revenue Arbitrum, an Ethereum Layer 2 scaling solution, reportedly has a surplus revenue from transaction fees that's going to its DAO. The surplus, totaling 3,332 Ether, is being hailed as a positive example of sustainable economics in the crypto world. 5. Brian Armstrong's Middle East Trip The conversation concluded with a discussion about Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong's trip to the Middle East. Armstrong tweeted several pictures of meetings with various government officials, suggesting potential business expansion or partnerships in the region. 6. Meme Coins The conversation then turns to the topic of meme coins, which are cryptocurrencies that have gained popularity through social media hype rather than their technological advancements or utility. The speakers discuss the recent trend of buying meme coins, with one of the speakers admitting to purchasing such coins. 7. Pepe Coin As an example of a meme coin, the speakers discuss Pepe Coin, which had a market cap of $1.5 billion at the time of the conversation. They note that the coin's value skyrocketed from virtually nothing to its current valuation within a month, minting millionaires in the process. However, they also caution that those who bought the coin after its peak valuation would be at a loss. 8. State of Staking Report A report on the state of staking in the cryptocurrency industry is discussed, with statistics such as the $288 billion market cap of the top 35 POS assets and the $68 billion value of staked assets. 9. Interest Rates and Federal Reserve Policy The speakers express their criticism of the Federal Reserve's interest rate policy, noting that the artificially low interest rates have created a fake world and distorted free markets. They argue that no one, not even central bankers, knows what the real interest rate should be, and the best tool to discover it is through free markets. They suggest that crypto assets could serve as an escape hatch from the distortion caused by central banks. 10. PayPal Crypto PayPal disclosed that it is safeguarding nearly $1 billion in crypto assets, with half a billion dollars in Bitcoin and $362 million in Ethereum. The speakers speculate about PayPal's next move, which they believe might involve staking crypto assets. 11. Elon Milady NFT Elon Musk tweeted about a digital asset referred to as a Milady, possibly an NFT or meme coin, and the speakers discuss the potential impact of his tweet on its value. 12. Su Zhu vs. Arthur Hayes Su Zhu has filed a restraining order against Arthur Hayes, the former CEO of BitMEX, due to alleged harassment on Twitter. It was suggested that Hayes has been publicly antagonizing Zhu regarding outstanding debts tied to Three Arrows Capital, a firm Zhu co-founded. 13. Stripe Crypto On-Ramp Stripe has been expanding access to a crypto on-ramp with a new hosted option, 
which the speakers see as bullish for crypto adoption. They note that Stripe's payment API is used by numerous platforms. 14. WorldCoin Wallet WorldCoin, a project aimed at distributing a universal basic income, UBI, through a cryptocurrency, has launched a mobile wallet. The speakers discuss the controversial WorldCoin Orb device which scans users' irises for identification and anti-fraud measures. Content Type Podcast Interview Content Publisher Bankless Publish date, May 2023. Web3 and how we got here, Chris Dixon. Summary, Chris Dixon, the founder and general partner, imparts a comprehensive historical narrative of the internet as we understand it today. His discussion ranges from its initial protocols to the emergence of colossal social networks, and explores the possibility of a truly decentralized and open web. Here are the main points discussed. 1. Innovating entrepreneurship, filling information void and tracing internet evolution, the discussion covers the importance of information sharing platforms for entrepreneurs and traces the internet's evolution, particularly focusing on blockchain and cryptocurrencies. It begins by underscoring the value of accessible entrepreneurial information and aims for further community engagement. The internet's history is divided into three eras, the Reed era, 1990-2005, democratized information access, the right era enabled content creation, and the current era, marked by the advent of blockchain and cryptocurrencies. The talk also delves into the Internet's changing control structure, particularly the DNS mapping, reflecting a constant battle between user and corporate control. 2. Pros and cons of corporate networks and the potential of blockchains, the talk explores the shift from protocol to corporate networks, discussing its effects on developers, creators, and users. It argues that a network structure dictates its fate. Protocol networks enabled decentralization but lacked funding, while corporate networks attracted investment and provided services, but often sacrificed user and creator interests. The speaker suggests blockchains can merge the advantages of both, by decentralizing control and promoting user-focused networks. 3. Blockchain Networks – The Balance Between Centralization and Decentralization The speaker emphasizes the potential of blockchain networks to balance centralized and decentralized systems, pointing to their ability to offer societal benefits akin to protocol networks while still attracting funding and fostering innovation. They believe blockchain networks, likened to cities, can create digital environments that stimulate competition and choice, while maintaining feature parity with corporate networks. This balance, they argue, avoids the pitfalls of absolute centralization or decentralization, offering a sustainable model for future digital ecosystems. Fourth, blockchain networks offer low take rates and high participant benefits. The speaker discusses the competitive advantage of blockchain networks due to their low take rates and high economic proposition for participants. This advantage is attributed to architectural features of blockchain networks such as lower switching costs and the ability to fork networks. Additionally, the open-source nature of these networks allows benefits to accrue to the community rather than a single company. The speaker suggests this could attract various creators and innovators, fostering a more equitable and sustainable network economy. 5. The power of composability and decentralization in the blockchain era, the speaker highlighted the potential of composability in blockchain technology to revitalize the spirit of innovation in software which they believe has been stifled by corporate network architectures. The speaker sees the current era as a dark age of corporate network dominance but believes a pendulum swing back to more open, innovative technologies is imminent. They argued that blockchain networks offer societal benefits akin to protocol networks, with the competitive advantages of corporate networks, especially through funding for development. They also emphasize the importance of both infrastructure and applications in software development. 6. Web3 Regulation and Decentralization Key to Future of Gaming and Metaverse The discussion primarily revolved around the importance of regulation in the Web3 space and the potential for gaming and the metaverse in a decentralized Web3 environment. It emphasized how appropriate regulation can provide a balance between innovation and consumer protection, and highlighted the significant role gaming could play in the metaverse if built on a decentralized, blockchain-based infrastructure. This would enable user ownership and create interoperable, shared composable services, a shift from current Web2 gaming models. 
the speaker cautioned that now is the time to contemplate this future architecture. 7. Crypto Social Networks, a new economy for creators, the speaker emphasizes the potential of crypto social networks to revolutionize the economics for creators. Currently, many creators work around high take rates from traditional social networks by using platforms like Patreon and Substack, or selling merchandise through Shopify. These solutions, however, are stop gaps rather than systemic changes. Crypto social networks can offer dramatically better economics for creators, giving them a greater percentage of the revenue from their work. This shift could disrupt the traditional social networking industry, offering a more equitable model for content creation and distribution. 8. The future of blockchain in gaming and the challenge of mobile gatekeeping, the speaker expects some existing massively multiplayer online MMO, games to incorporate global crypto economies, though most innovations will come from startups, as seen in the history of tech movements. He also discusses the complexity of designing game economies linked to wider systems, emphasizing balance, incentivizing constructive behavior, and aligning with genuine player interests. Regarding mobile platforms, the speaker acknowledges the power of Apple and Google as gatekeepers, suggesting that regulatory pressure may eventually offer a solution, but hits in games and other non-speculative uses could help change the narrative. Content Type Presentation Content Publisher a16z. Publish date, May 2023. Unpacking the hidden data of NFTs with Web3 cents, overpriced JPGs. Summary In this episode of the podcast, Overpriced JPGs, the host, Carly Riley, interviews Jim Borger, the CEO and co founder of Web3 cents, a company that provides insights and analytics into blockchain activities. The episode covers the origin of Web3 Sense, its partnership with the University of Notre Dame, and the central idea that blockchain technology can improve almost everything. The host and Borger also discuss the complexities of analyzing blockchain data and the future plans of Web3 Sense. Here are the key points. 1. Notre Dame backed Web3 Sense to revolutionize blockchain analysis with unique analytics platform. The speakers discuss the introduction of Web3 Cents, a Notre Dame backed company co founded by Jim Borger. Web3 Cents offers a robust analytics platform that can crawl blockchain, public, private, and hybrid data, providing valuable insights into on chain activity for various NFT communities. This unique tool aims to make blockchain analysis more user friendly and accessible, accelerating the growth and usability of blockchain technology. The company has been endorsed by the podcast host for their reliability and commitment to making the blockchain world safer and more comprehensible. 2. Web3 Sense analyzes loyalty in NFT communities, identifies vFriends as most loyal. The speakers discuss the analysis of community loyalty within the NFT space. The Web3 Sense team explained that they measure loyalty by looking at hold time, wallet personas, and the trend of these metrics over time. They identified vFriends as the most loyal NFT community based on these factors. The team also acknowledged that high-quality data science and engineering teams were crucial to their analytical process. 3. Influence of Twitter on NFT transactions analyzed, the speakers discussed the significant influence of Twitter on the NFT ecosystem, specifically the correlation between tweets from verified token holders and subsequent on-chain transactions. The participants discuss a case study that revealed an average of seven additional on-chain transactions following a tweet from a crypto dick but token holder. This correlation indicates the potential impact social media influencers can have on the NFT market. The conversation also highlights the role of a new analytics platform, Web3 Sense, in making these connections and predictions. 4. Influencer Impact in Web 3.0, Beyond Follower Count the conversation primarily emphasizes the importance and potential of Web 3.0, where brands, creators, and artists are reaching out to individuals based on their authentic interests and influence in specific spaces. A crucial point was the observation that even wallet holders with a relatively small follower count could significantly drive price action and activity. This suggests that influence in Web 3.0 is not solely determined by follower count but also by a person's genuine engagement and activity within a particular space. 5. Leveraging on-chain data to build and understand communities in the NFT space, 
the primary discussion revolves around the analysis of on-chain data in the context of non-fungible tokens, NFTs. The speakers examine patterns of trade and community behavior within the NFT market, such as the activity of specific nodes and the influence of prominent holders on trading patterns. They highlight the potential of these insights for businesses, focusing on the ability to identify and engage with interested parties, mitigate risks, and guide the formation of communities around new projects. Furthermore, they emphasize the value of maintaining user anonymity while enabling brand connection through token possession. 6. Leveraging data insights from token profiles to reshape marketing and enhance brand customer interactions, the crucial discussion revolves around the transformative potential of data insights derived from token profiles in reshaping brand marketing strategies. By analyzing such data, brands can discover overlapping customer bases and tailor collaborations or promotions accordingly. Importantly, data ownership remains with the consumer, allowing them to control what information they share. This analysis could lead to more personalized, rewarding experiences for customers and open new, data-driven avenues for brands to engage and add value to their communities. Content Type Podcast Interview Content Publisher Overpriced JPGs Publish Date May 2023 MEV in the Cosmos Henry de Valence Barry Plunkett Summary In this bell curve episode, Henry de Valence, the founder of Penumbra Labs, Inc., and Barry Plunkett, the co-founder of Skip Protocol, dive deep into the topic of minor extractable value MEV, in the Cosmos ecosystem. They explore the adverse effects of Ethereum's approach to maximizing extraction, the advantages of app chain sovereignty, exemplified by Osmosis Protorev module, and the crucial role of privacy in MEV, along with a detailed discussion about ABCI 2.0. Here are the main points covered, 1. Exploring differences in MEV philosophy between Ethereum and Cosmos, the discussion centered around the divergent philosophies of maximum extractable value MEV, on the Ethereum and Cosmos blockchain networks. Key points include Ethereum's MEV strategy, which optimizes for maximum extraction and validator commoditization, versus Cosmos approach, which is more opinionated and leans towards a concept they term sovereign MEV. The latter allows validators to have more active roles and also considers the protocol as a stakeholder in the MEV chain, potentially leading to a more user-oriented experience. 2. Penumbra's privacy-focused blockchain, balancing public and private user states for enhanced user experience, Penumbra, a privacy-centric blockchain, differentiates itself by maintaining a unique balance between public shared state and private per-user state. This innovative design offers users more privacy than traditional chains while maintaining transparency and accountability. Its decentralized exchange operates on a frequent batch auction model, largely due to technical requirements of managing public and private state interactions. This model minimizes the potential for manipulation via minor extractable value MEV, as transactions occur in batches, with users sharing a common clearing price. This approach fundamentally reshapes the MEV landscape, reducing opportunities for block producers to extract value. 3. The complexity and prospects of cross-domain MEV in a decentralized ecosystem. The central discussion revolves around cross-domain maximum extractable value MEV, in the context of blockchain sovereignty and interoperability. The conversation navigates the potential opportunities and technical hurdles of cross-chain arbitrage, with the majority of MEV currently arising from centralized to decentralized exchange arbitrage. The participants also explore the user experience challenges and potential solutions in a multi-chain environment, highlighting the importance of easing cross-chain transactions by leveraging off-chain actors. The tension between preserving chain sovereignty and promoting interoperability is also examined, underlining the complexity of decision-making in a shared sequencer setup. 4. Cross-chain messaging and coordination, a fundamental challenge for blockchain ecosystems, the discussion revolves around cross-chain messaging and its implications for the future of blockchain ecosystems. The participants highlight the technical and coordination challenges posed by verifying state routes and achieving consensus on common data formats across different chains. They explore the possibility of a convergence in the future, and some express skepticism towards a singular chain influencing the sequencing of others due to the high coordination costs involved. 
They also envision a future where users can express intents across chains, simplifying transactions in a multi-chain environment. 5. Balancing privacy and user experience in blockchain ecosystems. The conversation's focal point was the privacy trade-off in blockchain ecosystems, particularly in minimizing minor extractable value MEV. The speaker detailed the need for balancing the amount of transactional information revealed against user experience. They discussed different systems, MEV blocker, MEV share, and their varying approaches to managing this trade-off. The discussion also highlighted the potential of fully homomorphic encryption to avoid such trade-offs by using shielded information. The speaker encouraged exploring multiple chains to understand unique challenges and opportunities in MEV. Content type, podcast interview. Content publisher, Blockworks. Publish date, May 2023. The Evolution of Money with Neil Ferguson. Summary. Jeremy, host of The Money Movement, interviews renowned historian Neil Ferguson. They discuss the influences on Ferguson's studies of monetary and economic systems, particularly Frederick von Hayek. They also explore the concept of currency competition, touching on the emergence of non-sovereign digital money like Bitcoin and hybrid forms like USDC. Here are the main points discussed. 1. Historian Neil Ferguson discusses the relevance of Friedrich Hayek's ideas on currency competition and state monopoly of money, the main point of the discussion focuses on the relevance of economist Friedrich von Hayek's ideas in today's monetary systems, particularly the theory of currency competition and state monopoly of money. Ferguson highlights Hayek's skepticism of state control and his vision of competition in currencies. Reflecting on historical precedents, Ferguson points out the state's monopoly over money is a relatively recent phenomenon, and a return to private sector innovation and competition, as seen in the growth of digital currencies, is not inconceivable. 2. The evolution of the monetary system, a Darwinian view, the central point in this transcript revolves around the concept of the evolution of financial systems, as influenced by technological advancements and their impact on the current monetary structures. The speakers discuss the notion of financial evolution, likening it to Darwinian theory, and how it applies to the transition from traditional banking systems to potentially more efficient digital ones. They also debate the future of centralized banking control, comparing the approaches of China and the Western world, and touch upon the concepts of full reserve banking and the physics of money. 3. The Internet's Evolution, Balancing Decentralization, Privacy, and Convenience the podcast discusses the evolution of the internet, highlighting the transition from its initial commitment to open architecture and decentralized networks towards a more centralized system, driven by big tech's advertisement-driven business model. It explores the potential future of the internet, particularly the emergence of Web 3.0 and its potential for decentralization. The discussion emphasizes the importance of balancing individual liberty, privacy, and the convenience offered by centralized platforms. It also highlights the need for improved financial literacy and the threats posed by the over-reliance on convenience and security at the cost of privacy. 4. The promise of decentralization and the need for financial literacy, the speakers discuss the potential of decentralized technologies, like blockchain, in fostering direct economic relationships and convening capital markets on the internet, bypassing intermediaries. They also emphasize the importance of financial literacy, noting that technology can help educate people about their financial lives. They stress that the progress toward a decentralized future hinges on an educated citizenry capable of understanding and interacting with these new systems, suggesting that financial education could be integrated into user interfaces to make learning more accessible. Content Type, Podcast Interview Content Publisher, The Money Movement with Jeremy Allaire Published date, May 2023. Infusing AI into Web3 Gaming, Irreverent Labs. Summary, in this podcast episode, the host converses with Rahul Sood, co-founder of Irreverent Labs, a company creating AI-generated entertainment. Rahul shares his journey as a serial entrepreneur, starting from his first gaming hardware manufacturing venture, Voodoo PC, which was acquired by Hewlett Packard, to his time with Microsoft Ventures, and his involvement in various other ventures. He talks about Irreverent Labs, their product Mecha Fight Club, a robotic cockfighting game, 
and how AI is used to create intelligent non-player characters. Rahul also shares his interest in the blockchain and NFT space, and the company's 100-year economy vision, which is about creating a sustainable game economy based on ownership and human production, rather than just coin emission. Here are the main points discussed, 1. AI-driven emotional connections with Web3 gaming characters, the speakers discuss the concept of AI-driven, emotionally connected characters in Web3 gaming. Rahul sued and his company, Irreverent Labs, aim to create unique, autonomous characters that people can build bonds with, own like pets, and train, becoming part of the game's world. The Web3 component is focused on the ownership and provenance of these characters, emphasizing the importance of human production in building a sustainable gaming economy. 2. Ownership and User Experience The Future of Web3 Gaming The speakers discuss the potential of Web3 and gaming integration. The speaker emphasizes the importance of ownership of game characters, user experience, and the building of meaningful relationships in games. They argue that the future lies in users owning their characters, like pets, and sharing experiences with them in augmented reality settings. However, they caution that the technology should serve the game and the user experience, not the other way around. 3. Web3's Future in Entertainment AI tools empower creators, boost player agency. The conversation primarily revolves around the transformative potential of AI and Web3 in entertainment. The speaker discusses how their company, Irreverent Labs, is developing AI tools that empower creators to make 3D images and videos from text descriptions. They envision a future where anyone, not just large studios, can create entertainment content. The company is also developing a game, Mecha Fight Club, where players own their characters and can enhance their abilities or even turn them into celebrities. This introduces an unprecedented level of agency, blurring the lines between viewed and played entertainment. 4. Adapting business strategies in the face of market changes, the case of Irreverent Labs, the key point discussed centers on how Irreverent Labs, a tech startup, altered its monetization plan due to the crypto market crash. Initially, the company planned to integrate artificial intelligence, AI, into their product, a game featuring autonomous, unique characters. When the market collapsed, they pivoted, making the game free and launching the development tools sooner than planned. The company also had to bring in the cost of compute sooner, facilitated by a partnership with NVIDIA. Despite market uncertainties, they remain optimistic about their AI tool success. Content Type Podcast Interview Content Publisher, Web3 Business Podcast Publish Date, May 2023 How to Value Crypto Tokens, Fees, Flows or Fugazi, Roundup Summary In this episode of Bell Curve the guests discuss the latest events in crypto and the broader market. Here are the main points discussed. 1. Controversy surrounds Aragon's governance, investors lose an attempted treasury raid, the speakers discuss the controversy around Aragon, a decentralized autonomous organization, DAO, that focuses on providing software products for DAO governance. Investment funds tried to take over the Aragon DAO to reclaim capital, asserting that the value of Aragon's native token, ANT, had fallen below the value of Aragon's treasury. When the takeover vote succeeded, Aragon Foundation moved the funds before distribution, essentially nullifying the vote. This incident highlights the risks and complexities inherent in DAO governance and the potential misuse of funds in a decentralized setting. 2. Allegations surface against Carl Icahn of inflating asset values, the speakers discuss the allegations against business magnate Carl Icahn and his firm, Icahn Enterprises. The conversation reveals concerns about potential asset value inflation and the use of substantial personal margin loans by ICON. The dialogue reveals that he has pledged a significant percentage of his shares as personal margin loans and continues to increase this commitment, without disclosing essential loan details, like the terms, liquidation price, or total debt drawn out. This intriguing financial strategy prompts broader questions about the practice's prevalence in traditional finance. 3. Arbitrum proposes revenue distribution to ARB token holders, the speakers discuss the proposal for revenue distribution to ARB token holders by Arbitrum, an Ethereum Layer 2 scaling solution. 
The proposal aims to distribute a portion of the accumulated revenue from the Arbitrum DAO to ARB token holders, aligning community incentives and providing tangible value to the tokens. The distribution of revenue will be proportionate to the amount of ARB tokens delegated by each holder. The concept sparked a broad debate about the valuation of tokens and the impact of such revenue distribution on token economics. 4. The debate over Uniswap's proposed fee structure and its potential impact on liquidity, the speakers discuss is the proposed change in Uniswap's fee structure, turning on the V-switch, which is expected to significantly increase its revenue. The conversation mainly focuses on how the proposed fee structure could affect liquidity providers, particularly in light of the unique problems they face, such as impermanent loss. There's a concern that if the liquidity providers aren't profitable after this loss, it could lead to a migration of liquidity away from Uniswap. Further complications arise from potential tax and legal issues if the revenue starts accruing to the DAO. 5. Jared from Subway.eth's novel approach to MEV bots explored, the discussion centers around an innovative strategy employed by an individual or entity known as Jared from Subway.eth. This entity is known for its successful application of minor extractable value MEV bots, especially in trading Pepe, a meme coin. Unlike conventional practices, Jared maintains a substantial inventory of Pepe tokens and employs a unique, mega sandwiching trading strategy. Despite potential risks due to volatility, this approach has allowed Jared to dominate in an area that larger, traditional market players are retreating from, due to regulatory uncertainty. Content Type, Podcast Interview Content Publisher, Blockworks Publish Date, May 2023 100 Proof Live with Proof of Community, Are NFTs Dead? Summary, In This Conversation Kevin, Justin, and Derek are accompanied by Zeneca, Amanda, also known as Stevi, and a live audience from the Proof community. They delve into the prevailing concerns about the viability of NFTs and explore strategies to revive interest among potential buyers. They also discuss the evolution of blockchain technology and share their sentiments about the future. The objective of the dialogue is to address the critical question, are NFTs dead? Here are the main points discussed. 1. Panel discussion highlights challenges and optimism in NFT ecosystem. In a panel discussion, experts reflected on the current state of NFTs, noting that while market prices are down, the technology and development continue to advance. They agreed that for mass adoption, the technology needs to be simplified and integrated seamlessly into everyday life. There was skepticism about the promise of utility attached to many NFTs, suggesting that the inherent collectability of NFTs might be their strongest feature. Despite uncertain market conditions, the panelists expressed optimism for the future, citing the soundness of the technology and the inevitability of its rebound. 2. Building a sustainable future in the NFT space, the need for clear vision, realistic roadmaps, and community engagement, the discussion emphasizes the importance of adopting a sustainable and realistic approach to growth in the NFT space. Participants stress the value of building a focused vision and roadmap for NFT projects, stressing that genuine engagement with a community brings more significant benefits than quick, unsustainable growth. There's also a recognition that NFT communities function similar to exclusive clubs, offering intangible benefits like networking and experience, beyond just financial gains. The conversation underlines that being adaptable, responsive to market trends, and prioritizing long-term, quality products over quick results is crucial for long-term success. 3. The value of flexibility and market feedback for startups in Web3. 0. The most important point discussed was the role of flexibility and adaptability for startups operating in Web3.0 space. The conversation highlighted how a lean, iterative approach to development, rather than a rigid roadmap, often proves more successful. Startups, particularly those with limited resources, need to embrace the ability to pivot and reconfigure their products based on market feedback, carving out their own niche. The discourse also emphasized the importance of humility, underscoring that if a product isn't being used as intended, startups should be willing to shift their strategies swiftly. 4. The importance of digital ownership and art in crypto-native conversations, 
In the discussion, the panelists emphasized the importance of articulating the concept of digital ownership and the role of art in blockchain to people who aren't crypto native. They described the value of owning digital objects and the potential for NFTs to revolutionize areas such as gaming and art. The speakers suggested that regardless of market fluctuations, art in the blockchain space holds a unique and enduring value, thus instilling confidence in the future of this sector. 5. Harnessing technology to revolutionize art world and build supportive communities, the conversation centers on the transformative potential of technology in the art world, specifically through the use of non-fungible tokens, NFTs. The participants highlight the possibility of fostering communities around artists and using NFTs to democratize art collection, giving rise to a new paradigm of art patronage. Furthermore, they emphasize their desire to experiment within this new framework and maintain agility in their approach. In summary, the core discussion revolves around the intersection of technology, art, and community building. Content type, podcast interview. Content publisher, proof. Publish date, May 2023. Frogs, fevers, and fees, Bitcoin's new governance challenge. Summary, in his blog post, Frogs, Fevers, and Fees, Bitcoin's New Governance Challenge, Coindesk's Chief Content Officer Michael J. Casey explores the current issues concerning the Bitcoin community regarding the implementation of the BRC-20 standard, particularly its effects on transaction fees, block space congestion, and the ongoing debate about the utility and purpose of Bitcoin. Casey explores the Bitcoin network's congestion, as meme coins and non-fungible tokens, NFTs, introduced through the BRC-20 standard consume more data than standard transactions, driving up transaction fees and putting small transfers at risk. Bitcoin's new capability to support tokens, as facilitated by its taproot upgrade, has led to an influx of new Bitcoin-based meme coins. Many are derivatives of those found on other blockchains, such as Ethereum, and have demonstrated highly volatile price movements. Their proliferation, along with Bitcoin-based NFTs, has caused an increase in Bitcoin transaction fees, as these tokens require significantly more data than standard Bitcoin transactions. This surge in fees has instigated a debate within the Bitcoin community. Historically, disputes over the usage of Bitcoin's block space have been contentious, evidenced by the block size wars of 2016 to 2017. The controversy led to the establishment of the Lightning Network, which was designed to offload smaller transactions from the main chain to conserve block space. The BRC-20 situation has the potential to incite even stronger disagreements. On one side, Bitcoin purists argue that the currency should not be used for non-monetary purposes like storing digital artwork. On the other hand, supporters of the BRC-20 tokens and Bitcoin-based NFTs argue that Bitcoin is an open protocol and its usage should not be restricted. Casey argues against censorship and proposes solutions to tackle the problem. He criticizes the proposal by Luke Dasher, a prominent early Bitcoin developer, to block BRC tokens and NFT projects with a filter, as this would constitute censorship. Instead, he suggests exploring ways to ease the pressure on block space limits, potentially through code upgrades. These could include adopting some of Ethereum's Layer 2 scaling solutions or introducing time lock constraints or costs on certain speculative activities to improve system liquidity. He warns, however, that such restrictions could only apply to non-fungible tokens. In conclusion, Casey maintains that the core issue isn't the particular uses of Bitcoin, such as representing frog images, but rather the congestion of block space, which undermines Bitcoin's value as an efficient, intermediary free settlement system. He emphasizes that the focus of the governance conversation should be on this problem. The ultimate challenge for the Bitcoin community, and any blockchain community, is striking a balance between the rights of the individual and the interests of the group. Content type, article blog post. Content publisher, Coindesk, Michael J. Casey. Publish date, May 2023.